right, well, what's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. I've been gone for a little bit. I actually haven't been in my office like working and shooting video since April 5th, since the day before my birthday. Due to so many reasons that I'm actually gonna talk about real quickly right now, I've just been I've just been gone and now I'm back. So what this video is gonna be is just a few updates and then I'm gonna show you how I like to build on the dead goat, like my ideal build for the dead goat. But first I wanted to do just some real quick updates. If you don't care about any of these updates, just jump to this timestamp right here and we'll already be talking about the dead goat. So yeah, like I said, I've been gone for a little bit. My birthday was April 6th and uh, Casey and I went out to Las Vegas for a few days. We stayed at the MGM Grand. We hung out with Dwayne. We went and saw Penn and Teller. I had a fantastic birthday in Las Vegas. And then I came home and I was home for like two days and I got no work done and then I instantly just left for Star Wars Celebration in Chicago. And I was at Star Wars Celebration in Chicago for like, I think it was seven days, including the travel on both ends. I got home really, really, what day was that? I don't even know what day it is right now. I flew home Tuesday, April 16th. I was here for not even one day, the very next day, Casey and I uh, had to very quickly leave up to Northern California to go to Santa Rosa to kind of visit with and take care of my dad just a little bit. Maybe this is a little bit of an oversharing situation, but I, I have no reason to be nothing but honest with you guys. My dad is, is incredible. He's 71 years old. He, he's had Parkinson's for 25 years or something like that. It's just rough. It just it just is a little rough sometimes, especially when he texts you and says, I'm going to the emergency room because I'm peeing blood and I don't know what's wrong with me and the doctors don't know what's wrong with me. Casey and I got that information and we're like, nope, let's just go. We're just, bye, bye work. We're gonna go be with my family now and take care of my dad. And Lon, my stepmother, was also down for the count. She had to have a tooth pulled because it was infected. So she was down and she is normally taking care of my dad a little bit. It was just one of those, it was just one of those family situations where I had to just say goodbye to everything I was working on. I mean, I was in the middle of a work day. I was answering emails and prepping stuff for the vlog and prepping stuff for videos. And then within the span of about 45 minutes, uh, Casey left work and we packed up and we got in the car and we were on the road up to Northern California. And so that's kind of where I've been for the last few days. I've been trying to be a little bit active on a little bit of social media, a little bit of, you know, posting and things on Twitter just because there's so much advocacy stuff going on. It's ridiculous. I've been, I've been trying to do that a little bit, but for the most part, I've been real unplugged man hopefully things uh now can get back to a little bit more normalcy back in la back in the office ready to work i was cranking out emails yesterday i'm dying to shoot some video we're doing the vlog this week so so we're, things are gonna be normal. I can't promise that they're always gonna be the, you know, that they're always gonna be normal, but I'm certainly going to do my absolute best. But seriously, thank you everybody for kind of bearing with me while these things happened. I, t I had my birthday and then I took a little bit of a, like a spring break type of thing and then some family issues came up and it was just, you know, it was kind of just one thing after the other. If you've been a subscriber of mine for any amount of time, you know that I I really don't take a lot of time off. This is uh, this is where I wanna be. This is I wanna be on YouTube. I wanna be in my office. I wanna be you know breaking down vape gear and I wanna be live streaming. And this is what I this is what I want to do. And when I can't be doing this. Uh, it bums me out and and there are certain things especially just family things that are occasionally going to require my full full attention and that's just there's 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 just no way around it so now that we're all a little bit back up to speed let's talk about this dead goat i haven't done a video for the dead goat i don't know if Dwayne's done a video for the dead goat like i said i've just been a little bit out of the loop but i wanted to show you guys how i like to build for the dead goat uh it, it's a little bit different it's 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 we're just gonna go through it you know what i'm not gonna sit here and try to explain this 
let's just go to the bathroom. So I got my dead goat here, and this is basically the build I've had in it since NVE. This is the same coils, same cotton, and same juice I've been vaping in it since NVE, and it stayed surprisingly clean, but we're just gonna take it apart. I'm gonna pull the deck out. We're gonna take this whole build out of here, but first things first, here's the AFC, and it's an adjustable AFC right here. You can pull the AFC cap off, and you're gonna see these, you know, two big sort of, uh, AFC, I don't know, what do you call those? Fins, tangs, and it might be a little bit difficult to see, but those are going to open up and close off your airflow. This is a really bad angle to view this at. And of course, 810 drip tip on top, and you pull the cap off, and there's your deck. Now these coils stayed surprisingly, surprisingly clean. This is with that coil spill. Rich kids of Instagram, I've been vaping this since NVE, and it stayed clean. I'm almost through that whole 60 mil bottle already. But now what we're gonna do, because we can, is we're just going to unscrew the deck completely out of the dead goat. One of the things I love about this, and then your base kind of stays there, and now you just have your deck to work with. Now, since we're going to be rebuilding this rather than just re-wicking it, I'm just going to go ahead, flathead screwdriver, going to take these coils right out. Easy, easy. And then there's your uh, there's your deck right there. This is, of course, a little bit of a collaboration with Mr. Vape and Heathen. This is, uh, this is basically the dead rabbit deck. Ah! Got all my dead goat parts. You're gonna see that there's a squonk pin here as well as a squonk pin there, even though I'm using it as a dripper. There's a, you don't need to swap anything out if you wanna squonk it or drip with it. But anyway, let's get back to the desk and let's build it actually. All right, I kind of got everything I need here. We're gonna put this all somewhere else. Because I'm gonna be running this dead goat on a dual parallel box, that Aspen Modco Monarch, I'm gonna be using some of these AJ Holland six core aliens flavor, just all day long. So here's the parts of the goat that you've probably seen before. The base, normally there is a anarchist wire based coil head that you can screw into here and just drip and squonk to your heart's content. But what comes with the dead goat combo is new goat top cap, new goat airflow, new goat AFC. Obviously Dwayne and I are a big fan of nice snappy fit and finish. So these, this cap just, the way that it snaps in there, look, it's like, Kennedy quality o-ring snappage pop just pops in so well stays so secure and you can see opens up and closes off your AFC your airflow right there and now kind of my favorite part of this is if you thought the dead rabbit was easy to build on the dead goat is easier somehow to build on and part of it is that you can take the deck completely out of the base so you don't even need to pre-snip your leads you can just put them in there and clip them once they're already screwed in and it is positive negative this way to this way not this way to this way your coil has to span the distance between those two. So I'm just gonna pop one of these in. And these six core AJ Holland coils that are four wraps just perfectly are perfect, the perfect distance, the perfect length, the perfect amount of wraps to span the distance between these two like post holes right here. And like I said, all you need to do is pop your leads in there and screw down the screws. Don't even worry about trimming it yet. Second coil gets dropped in, screws get tightened. Yeah, super, super easy peasy. And now that you got all of your leads kind of poking out the bottom here, you can just go around the bottom with your your clippers and clip all your leads flush. And like I showed you earlier, there's a squonk pin in the goat and there's a squonk pin in the coil head, but it squonks out of the side here. So if you just wanna throw this on a squonker and squeeze it, it's gonna squonk for you. Or you can just put this together and use it on a dripper because you can drip all over this thing and you're not gonna get any juice to go into that particular squonk hole. So deck goes in the base, make sure it's nice and snug. So real quickly, let's talk about coil positioning. Now, when I used to use the dead 
grab it, I used to put my coils right in the center, meaning I would install them and I would kind of keep them real close to the middle. Maybe just a little bit something like that. I used to keep them real close to the middle. What I found for me that works way better on the dead go is to move your coils off to the sides. Something a little bit more like that. I take my coil and I push it like as far off to the side as it will go. Try to get it like lined up the edge of it with like the edge of the deck right here. And what this actually does is two different things. It really helps prevent a lot of spit back that happens. Sometimes in RDAs, RTAs, whatever, if you have coils running right through the middle, meaning you can look down your drip tip and see a coil. Sometimes if the coil's right there, it just has the tendency just to get a little bit spitty. But when you move these coils off to the side like that, and I put this cap on here, when you look down, you can't see the coils. All you can see is that beautiful dead goat deck right there, the very center of it. Really helps with spit back, and also what it does is it creates, I don't even know what to call it, like a little tide pool here of liquid. You can just bleh your liquid through the drip tip like a champion with this. I'll demonstrate it in a second as soon as I get these glowing well enough to wick. not bad all right let's wick it so now we're gonna trim these wicks and there's no need to you know thin out your wicks or, or you know comb them out or anything like that you just got to cut them you just got to cut them correctly and so the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of measure down I just want these to be long enough just to get captured by the edge of this uh, you know off the edge of the of the juice well here So maybe something like that it's always better to start moderately you can always take off cotton but you can't add cotton back and give these edges just a you know a little bit of a trim as well no big deal it's not crucial it's just something I like to do and now this is gonna be the real test of if I cut it to the correct length I'm just gonna press these down into the deck oh, perfect dude perfect just pop those down in there perfect 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 it's not packed with cotton the rim of the juice well is keeping those wicks perfectly tucked under because we spaced our coils apart now we have that big big like just tide pool for liquid right there I know the term tide pool it, it doesn't make much sense and it's kind of stupid in if I'm being real honest just can't think of anything else to call this but I want to show you what happens that tide pool effect when you just bleh your juice into the dead goat That is some beautiful bleh action. And what that does is it forces liquid kind of all over your coils and the liquid that doesn't get to your coils goes down into the juice well here and is gonna start getting absorbed by your wicks. If I feel right here, yeah, these wicks down here are already moist, it's already wicking. In fact, even after those two gigantic bleh's of liquid, there is no more liquid left in the juice well. There's no way, it's not gonna drip out anywhere because the cotton has already absorbed all of that liquid. You instantly saturate your coils, you saturate your wicks without even like applying it just from bling. I can press this button and it will produce the vapors. And then this is that baby snake bite airflow. At least I think that's what we're calling it, the baby snake bite airflow, but it, it's high up, it's angled, it's smooth as anything you've ever wanted. And we're gonna place it on here like this boosh so it's just pointed right at your coils stellar 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 i am excited to vape this let's uh let's do that now we'll just we'll talk about it a little bit you know so one of the things that I like to do when I'm vaping the dead goat, and this isn't like a, a required thing, but if you're a purger, I sometimes like to purge, and I like to purge on the dead goat, but the problem is the, the airflow is kind of angled up at you. It's a little bit like the original recipe recoil in that, yeah, the airflow is kind of angled up at you, and if you purge it while it's, it's here, it's just going to blow vapor kind of you know, near your face. It's not a huge deal, but it, it does kind of happen. So I purge it from a distance and this is really an old school move. Once upon a time, I want to say it was like 2014. Everybody used to purge their stuff without putting their mouth anywhere near the drip tip. You'd see dudes walking around vape shops going like this. 
like that. That's how they purge it. And that's what I kind of do with the dead goat. I fire it, I just blow into the drip tip from a distance, and then you can take a huge, huge old rip on it. Oh my God, the air flows smooth, the air flows swooshy. With the position of those coils, the flavor is stellar. It creates that little tide pool in there. It also keeps the spit back down. It's just, it's just a damn, damn good vape. Now this is a, a pretty low build. These AJ Holland uh, six core aliens came out to right around 0 0.8, which I'm running them on a dual parallel with good 2700 batteries in there. So there's no worries there. And it is, it, it's just real warm. This is such a desirable vape to me. I used to be such a dual parallel guy, low resistance, dual parallel. Give it to me. That's what I want. And these six core aliens in this dead goat, it, it's warm, it's flavorful. It almost, it almost feels warm enough to be like a series type of build without having to stack batteries. And with running the risk of repeating myself, the ability to just, I mean, not even, you can carelessly, carelessly blay your juice in here. You saw it in the up close. It just, it, it piles up, gets all over your coils, all over your wicks. It's a beautiful experience. 